there. Where are you from? Tennessee? Because baby, you're the only ten I see. As soon as I walked in here today, I seen one of my exes. You know, as soon as she seen me, she had a tear coming down her face. I wanted to go and comfort her and give her a hug. But I was too afraid to wipe away her eyebrows. I also see a lot of cougars here tonight. Cougars. You guys call them cougars. I call them mountain lions. You know why? Because they're mounting everything and lying about it. <laughs> but my exes, you know who you are. My exes, like I always say, the past is the past. Just let me go. I've seen a few of my exes here tonight and you know, I made an exes song. So I'm going to sing this song to all my beautiful exes. It goes a little something like this. But me, I never went 
went to high school. I went to school high. You young ones, don't be like me. You know, one day in school, I asked the teacher, I said, teacher, teacher, can I go and use the washroom? He said, no, namoya, Henry. I said, how come? He said, because you don't listen. I said, teacher, I was listening. He said, okay, Emory, if you were listening, use the word dandelion in a sentence. And if you can get it right, you can go and use the washroom. So I thought, let's see, dandelion, dandelion. Teacher, I got it, dandelion. He said, okay, Emory, dandelion. I told him, the cheetah is faster than the lion. <laughs> All the kids started to laugh. He said, no, that's not the right answer. He said, I'm going to give you another chance. He said, use the word fascinate. I said, fascinate? This one's an easy one. My shirt has nine buttons, but I can only fascinate. He said, no, that's wrong. He said, okay, we'll try me again. Use the word statue. I said, statue, statue. Okay, I got it. Okay, Emory, statue. I never met my dad until I was 18, and the first time I met him, I asked him, Dad, statue? <laughs> he said, no, Emory. So he said, okay, use the word deliver. I thought, deliver, deliver, let's see. Okay, I got it, deliver. Me and my grandpa shot a moose last night and we cut out the heart and deliver. <laughs> he said, no, Emery. He said, use the word assorts. I thought, assorts, assorts. I went to a sweat last night and I was wearing assorts. <laughs> he said, no, wrong. Use the word intense. I thought, intense, let's see. I went to the Pao and the Indians were sleeping in tents. <laughs> he said, no, no more, yeah. He said, this is your last chance, I'm reading. Use the word ear, ear in a sentence. I thought, ear, ear, this one is another easy one. My dad and my uncle were smoking a skinny cigarette in a shed last night. Every time my uncle would take a drink, he would pass it back and say, ear. <laughs> Settle down, dude. But you know, like I said, I was never good in school. You young ones, you stay in school. Growing up in a reserve, a Cree community. You know, my first language was Cree. I only understood and spoke Cree. Me and my brother Thomas. But one day, my mom came to Onion Lake. She said, you and Thomas are moving with me. I said, moving where, mom? She said, we're moving to Saskatoon. I said, I don't want to go to Saskatoon. But she didn't give us a choice, and you know. Me and Thomas went to Saskatoon. My mom said there's better education there, so you know, we went. First day of school in Saskatoon, none of the kids wouldn't talk to us. I told Thomas, I said, Thomas, bro, I don't think they like us here. Second day, nobody wouldn't talk to us. A little white boy brought a big red juicy apple for the teacher. The teacher started treating him really, really good. So I told Thomas, I said, Thomas, brother, we gotta bring apples. Thomas said, we don't even have apples, bro. I said, well, do you still know how to make bannock? He said, yes, I still know how to make bannock. So that evening after school, Thomas started getting the ingredients ready. He preheated the oven, he put the timer on, and he handed me the fork. He said, when the timer comes off, you know, bring that pan and coat. But before you put it in the oven, I want you to fork this pan up just like Kugam taught us. 
So I grabbed a fork and I started to think, you know, to make this bannock special, I wanted it to come from us three kids, you know. So I started forking the initial, I put a F period, U period, C period, K. I put F U C K on this bannock, I threw it in the oven. The timer went off. It came out perfectly brown, you could read F-U-C-K. So we took it to school the next morning, extra early. The teacher, you know, she opened the bag. She seen this banner. She said, who made this banner? I said, us, us. She said, get to the office right now. I said, holy, is this the way you treat trees around here? So we went to the principal's office. And the teacher put the bag in the panic on the principal's desk. The principal walked in, he said, aren't you the new Creek kids? I said, yeah, we are. He said, well, how come you're in trouble already? I said, we were trying to be nice. So he looked in the bag, the principal seen the panic, and he seen the initials F-U-C-K. He yelled at us, he said, if you were trying to be nice, why would you go and put F-U-C-K on this banner? I said, holy, settle down. That stands for from us Cree kids. But you know, I'm trying to be different now, and I'm trying to be a good person, and I'm trying to, uh, trying to stay on that straight and narrow road. And you know, uh, my sister, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. My sister, she has eight kids. My sister has eight kids, and the saddest part about it, all her eight kids were born with ADD, all different dads. But she was pregnant with her ninth kid. And she said, you know, brother, I'm pregnant with my ninth kid, and I'm single again, and I'm ready to go into labor any time. I said, well, what do you want me to do? That's not my problem. She said, I need your help, brother. Nobody can take me to the hospital in case I go into labor. So that evening, you know, I went to her house and sure enough, she came into labor. She came into labor with her ninth kid. So she said, take me to the hospital. I took her to the hospital. I got her into the emergency room. I was waiting in the waiting room. The doctor came out about 15 minutes later. I could hear a baby crying. The doctor came out and he said, congratulations, Emery, you're a new uncle again. I said, right on, I'm so proud of my sister. This is her ninth kid. What did she have, a boy or a girl? The doctor said she had both. I said, what? She had twins? My, the doctor said, yes, your sister had twins, a boy and a girl. I said, so she has ten kids now? The doctor said, yes. I said, I'm so proud of my sister. This is a new start for her. This is the first time she has two kids with the same dad. <laughs> but the doctor said, that your sister, you know, she has to stay. The twins, they gotta get shipped. They're gonna go on an airplane to Saskatoon. And you have to go with them. I thought, okay, I'll go with them, you know, I'm a good uncle. So I went with them to Saskatoon. We got to Saskatoon and, you know, I was waiting in the waiting room again. The doctor was in the emergency room. He came out and he was on the phone with my sister. He said, I'm on the phone with your sister here right now. The twins are doing a lot better, the boy and the girl. But they need more serious tests done. And before they get more serious tests done, they're going to have to have names. And your sister wants you to name them. I said, okay. 
I'll be a good brother, I'm here for her. So I think the boy and the girl, they went back into the emergency room to get the more serious test done. My sister walked in about half an hour later. Same time the doctor wheeled out the twins, and this was the first time my sister got to meet the boy and the girl, her new babies. They wheeled the girl over and the boy, and she seen her daughter for the first time. She said, she's so beautiful, brother, I told her I know. She said, what did you name her? I told her, I named her Denise. She said, what a beautiful name, Denise. Well, what did you name him? I told her, Ch the nephew. <laughs> it's gonna hit you guys here in a few minutes. But you know, if it wasn't for this tall, dark, handsome man, this man of a man behind me, you know, and he's not making me say that. I don't know where I would be today. I still remember the first time he ever put his hand inside me? Hey, let's <laughs> I'll put Emery away here for a while. Uh, 